Hi, everyone. It's nice to be back with all of you. Um, I am Barbara Smith, and I'm here with my co-author, um, Christian, Christian McNeil. McNeil. And um, we are um, going through a book that we wrote together called Addiction, One Cause, One Solution, chapter by chapter to just give a little bit deeper um, commentary on some of the things that we've written and some of the things that um, are, are explained in the book. And, um, you know, we invite people to join us uh, once a month. Uh, this month, we're a little bit off on our days because of Easter, but we usually uh, meet on the first uh, Sunday of the month uh, and um, go through the book. So today, we're going to be talking about the chapter entitled um, A New Look at Trauma Ther Theory. And uh, Christian is going to kick us off. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about this. I, I don't think from a personal point of view that um, I've ever considered myself as someone who has been traumatized um and that, and of course that, that you know our, our personal experience is only a tiny part of the story but i certainly did get caught up in the whole world of looking to the past as an explanation for my problems in the present and um and, and that happened that started that process started um you know, a couple of years before I got sober, when I found myself in a really intense relationship, um, and for the first time, I, I went, I went to therapy. I, I, I had never been involved in anything like that before. Um, I didn't. I really did. It was very kind of emotionally illiterate in many ways. So I said, no, you know, I, I really didn't know how to express myself, and I'd kind of grown up in an atmosphere where. There was a tendency to avoid anything deep or anything real or anything too painful or emotional. And anyway, in the course of this therapy, the therapist suggested that one of the reasons this very painful relationship was so compelling to me was because of the similarities that the man I was in a relationship had um, with my father at the time I was born. And, you know, he was the same age. And, but there were extraordinary similarities in terms of you know, job, personality, I mean, just endless similarities. And, and, and it was very interesting to me, it was fascinating to me. And, and, and today, when I look back, I, you know, I, I, I suppose I consider um, it, it could even be helpful to explain what was an otherwise an inexplicable um, depth of connection I felt you know, and, 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 and a total inability to get out of that relationship um, at that point because I felt so hooked into it I felt it was really like my it was like life and death it was oxygen to me but it, but the explanation didn't actually enable me me to leave and, and what did enable to me enable me to leave that relationship which was maybe 18 months or two years later was an insight was that you know an, an insight that um, Unless I broke this connection, I, it was it was going to destroy my life. It was going to it was going to go on and on and on and it, and it, the the the, um, the nature of the relationship was such that I had I had lost so much of my my kind of sparkle and my um, my, my personality and and. And, and kind of freedom, if you like, and, and and so there was an insight about you know I had to you know I had to make the change internally, but what what happened for me at that time, Wendy, could you switch your camera off, please, because we're doing the recording bit. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Wendy. Um, what um yeah um. Well, it began for me what became a sort of compulsive and fascinating troll through my past um, um, with lots and lots and lots of courses of different kinds of therapy and interventions and, and, and you know which in my case went on for you know maybe something like 15 years and and, and that was also true of, of some of my friends and and, and you know and, and um, 
in, in the recovery world. And at some point along this line, I did get sober, which was another insight. It was nothing to do with learning about the past. It was a moment of insight in, in the present moment. And obviously, and I trained in lots of things and I became really immersed in this world that had at, at its centre an idea that the only way to emotional freedom was to go through this pain and get to the other side. Except what I noticed was that nobody got to the other side and everybody seemed to stay somehow stuck in the, stuck in the pain and, and with an increased sense of, could you... Catherine, will you turn off your camera just because we're going to do this? Um, there you go. Thank you. Um, yeah, the um, people seem to get really stuck in this place of, um, uh, you know, lots and lots of pain and the conviction that they had to do yet more therapy. There was yet more. It was called work to be done. <laughs> and, and that really the only that, you know, this was the only way to kind of lance the trauma of the past and the trauma was presented as though it was a, a, a kind of standalone thing. And yet nobody seemed to get through and everybody just seemed to become more and more caught up in, in a sense of being victimized. And, um, and I'm not in any way downplaying that terrible things uh, yeah, as sometimes happen to children, things that should not happen. And I'm certainly not in the business of, um, dissuading anybody from from prevention of, of, of those kind of things you know I, I you know I in an ideal world children are loved and cherished and, and and safe and 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 we also know that lots of children unfortunately don't have that experience but what's become clearer and clearer um to me since I stumbled across the, the inside out understanding is that the what creates pain and hurt and powerlessness in the present moment is is not directly what happened in the past but it's the the thinking that people have innocently and unintentionally picked up about themselves in a, in response to to what has occurred in their lives and and what's really wonderful about that is that those thoughts, no matter how painful, are in fact just as flimsy as every other thought, and and they and they can dissolve and disappear for anyone in a in a in a single moment of insight, or more commonly in a series of insights and realizations. Because the other truth that has become increasingly clear to me, um, in terms of the inside out understanding is that irrespective of what's happened irrespective of how horrendous um someone's past might be there is an essence of them that is whole and untarnished and unbroken and and capable of experiencing fresh thought and joy and creativity and love and every other good thing under the sun um so this is a this is an incredibly hopeful understanding for me it, it has absolutely changed my life I, I was able to put down all of that stuff all of that searching for um, the answer in the past once I stumbled across this work and I've seen that occur um, to many many other people and I've seen that occur with, with people that, that I'm I'm working with as well and it's it's, it's just an, an, an extraordinary resource it's an extraordinary possibility to be restored to wholeness and um it's very encouraging to me and and very uplifting so i'm, I'm kind of thinking that might be a good place to hand it over to you barbara for you for your thoughts and experience on this topic sure thanks um you know, I, I've been a psychotherapist for a long time, really most of my adult life. And, you know, the, the field of trauma therapy really came up about, I guess, 25, 30 years ago. And I really immersed myself in it. You know, I really bought in hook, line and sinker to this idea that uh, was being portrayed that, you know, trauma was what happened to us in our lives um, 
experiences outside what we would consider a normal range of um, experience in, in a human life um, had some ability to leave a lasting mark on us. And so, um, you know, I would do a lot of assessment of that with people. We would go into the trauma and explore the trauma and analyze the trauma and talk about the trauma and talk about the trauma. And a lot of people would come into therapy and say, you know, I don't want to talk about the past. And I would say, well, then you really will not get better. And they would say, why? And I would say, because in order to get better, you have to heal the past. And they would say, well, why? And I would say, because. <laughs> and they would say, I don't get it. And I, you know, and I really had no justification for that at all. It was just something that I had been taught. But, you know, I, I, I just didn't see this. I didn't see that even though I did see it, I mean, it was right in front of my eyes that you could have a family full of people who had grown up with the same trauma of an alcoholic father or sexual abuse by a priest or whatever the trauma was and have, you know, five or 10 totally different responses to that trauma. So I guess in my mind, there was sort of this idea that if you got through that unscathed, you were kind of lucky. And, um, but I never really examined, like, isn't that interesting? Like, why do some people get through it? And I'm sure lots of people have done triple blind studies on why that's the case. And, you know, what, what kinds of whatever you have in your brain or whatever, but, you know, the simplicity of this understanding that it it never was and never will be the trauma that the actual event that that uh, creates our experience and once we can see that explains so much it just explains why some people go through things unscathed and others really are you know immobilized by it um it explains why you know, after a period of time, you know, a lot of people are able to put things behind them and why other people really aren't, you know, why some people can grieve and grieve and grieve for the loss of a child for the rest of their lives, whereas others might, you know, really just sort of put it in, in a, some sort of perspective that allows them to move on and very um, resilient and, um, healed ways um, and to me that explanation has meant everything um, you know as a as a searcher for my whole life looking for what i could do to relieve people's suffering to have an understanding of how this whole system works and that we are in fact the creator of our experience of the trauma by how we think about it in any moment um, just gives us this perspective that's extraordinary in terms of giving us the freedom to be able to move forward from whatever it is that's happened to us in life and see it as something rather than something fixed that we now have to drag with us <laughs> through, through our entire life to something that happened in a period of time and seeing our ability, our innate ability, the, the psychological immune system that we have that allows us to move on and embrace the present moment in, in ways that we don't have to be weighted down by that. And, you know, in, in the field of, um, you know, working with uh, so many veterans over the years, you know, what I can see is that trauma therapy in many ways has created more problems than it's solved. Um, it's created, and I, I mentioned this in the book, it's created people who are carrying around this weight of this belief that they have been victimized by whatever uh, experience they had, and then their world becomes organized around that, and they're really unable to live in and appreciate and value the moment and they get 
you know, like it's terribly sad. You know, I mean, I've worked with a number of families whose, you know, everything in the family becomes organized around that person's trauma and um, what you can do, what you can say, how loud noises can be, whether you can go on vacation, where you go. I mean, it's, it's, it's really um, so constrictive that people just can't be in the moment. They can't experience joy. They can't experience spontaneity. Um, and again, I think innocently, we didn't know this is what we were doing. We created more problems than we solved. So again, to repeat what Krishna said, this is not in any way to, to minimize uh, that people go through extremely difficult circumstances. I think we, we wanted to include in that chapter, you know, difficult circumstances certainly that I experienced in my lifetime that were, you know, extraordinarily painful at the time. And yet seeing that time you know, when we, when we just are in, in the flow of how life works, that time and, and again, this psycho, psychological immunity that we have that allows us to gain clarity, to gain new perspective, to, to move beyond that. Uh, when we're not fixating our thinking on it and just play, playing the replay button over and over and over and over. So I don't know if you wanted to add anything there, Kristen. I was just going to um, br say briefly, you know, the, just the, the, ex the experience of shifting and, and um, from someone who saw myself and had been told that I was, you know, <laughs> broken and emotional crippled. So <laughs> given that diagnosis um, or that suggestion, I, I mean, I was kind of high functioning in a lot of ways. I was, I was a lawyer in those days. I could do my job and so on. But I, you know, I experienced lots of um, stress and um, anxiety and, 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 that, and that would somehow sometimes translate into sort of back and shoulder and hip, you know, these kind of things, digestive problems. And what while I believe that, that that my problem was kind of brokenness as a result of my past and that that because that's what I thought was wrong with me um I was it was kind of, this was just kind of a, an illustration of what you were saying everything that happened in my life that was difficult or you know every low mood every time I lost my temper or anything like that was taken in my mind as evidence of the brokenness and and then and then I had to have a, an antidote to that, and and of course none of them worked because I wasn't actually broken. But you know, so first it was like you know it was a meditation, meetings, writing, walking, yoga, you know, just endless, endless. And I often kind of joke about the secret side gig of maintaining my mental health, but because nothing prevented this natural ebb and flow, it. I took the wrong conclusion every time I had another low or another, you know, another time of feeling stressed and then the, and, and concluded that I needed to take more action to fix myself. And the experience of discovering this work and, and, and hearing a truth about it, there was something in it, that ring of truth. Um, I mean, I just abandoned all of that immediately. So from the outside, you know, I'm still someone who can lose my temper or have a down day or, you know, a, 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 something like that. But none of it is taken as evidence of my brokenness. <laughs> and I don't have the secret sidekick anymore. And there's a sort of cumulative effect of just, um, it, you know, before enlightenment, chop wood, <laughs> carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. But the but there is less pain in my life. There is less stress because I'm not so busy focusing on something that I can't change. You know, and and um, I'm much more able to notice the contentment, the peace of mind and um, all of that stuff that was always there. But I was ignoring because I was so focused on the problems. No, so that's my that's been my personal experience of just how and how quickly it can shift after a moment of clarity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe this would be a good place to stop and um, stop the recording and, um, you know, invite 